Just set up the suspension on the bike before heading up to uh, Ben Laura's and just ran into this dude. Qualified 69th at Fort William in 2008 Bulgaria! in the downhill <laughs> for Bulgaria. <laughs> So, Apple kitted me out with a new phone, which this is. Um, back filming again in Edinburgh still, just skiing along, gonna go to get a haircut and then we're gonna head up to Ben Lawyer's. So, possibly, uh, a couple of cool guys that might be there, Ali Clarkson and Pete Scullion. So, that'd be pretty awesome, but we'll see if that happens. Just waiting to hear what's going on with that. Just got a text from Andrew to say that we're meeting at the car park at 6 to head up at 6.30. What's your sunset's like just after 9? I guess it's not much time to go up the hill, but we'll catch the sunset. Now, quick aside, something I want to do ever since I did the MTB World logo is get it printed on some, a t-shirt. So I was in Edinburgh today and I just so happened I passed the place and I asked them. And now it's just a tester and I'll get it done properly at some point. But that is so cool. <laughs> All right, we've got a long section where I don't need to know where I'm going and we're on the motorway. So let's jump about this ride today. Now, Andrew, uh, or, well, McTrail Rider, formerly known as Andrew, gave me a shout. Well, I actually gave him a shout and asked if we want to go ride on Monday uh, because of the bank holiday. And he was like, yeah, you want to have Ben Lawyers? Uh, lawyers, lawyers, one of those two. Um, and I was like, well, we did that before, but we never actually made it. We went up Ben Glass, and then Ben Lawrence was absolutely covered in snow, so we didn't bother going up that bit. And he's been up a couple, like two other times, and not made it to the top of Ben Lawrence for whatever reason, just weather, that kind of stuff, time. So we're going up. Sun doesn't set until 9.49 tonight, so should be enough time. However, what we're planning on doing is setting off at 6 or 6.30. So by the time we get to the top, we're going to sweet sunset and um, we get a sunset descent. Which sounds really romantic. What it really means is we're going to have low visibility. <laughs> it's going to look great on photos and video, but we're going to have low visibility. So, yay. I'm just driving up there just now. Uh, probably going to get there a bit early. And kind of what I'm going to focus on in, in this video is for this type of ride, which is a hiker bike, how do you prep for it? Now. A lot of people kind of write off hiker bikes as, you know, they're not really mountain biking because there's mountains and there's a bike involved, but you do a lot of walking. And you probably carry your bike for some of it as well. And a lot of people feel it's harder work than cycling, which it kind of is. You're, uh, you're using different, you're using the, so similar muscles, but in completely different ways. And whereas on a bicycle, when you're cl doing a climb, you can kind of just like nibble away at that climb with like easy, higher cadence pedal strokes. When you're hiking with the bike, you've got that added weight and you are gaining height in steps. And those are kind of like lunges and in those steps because you're going up. And in each of those lunges, it requires a lot more force output over that same period of time as you'd be outputting a very small amount of force on the bike. So they are harder. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do them because likely even if you're doing cross country racing, that kind of stuff, you're gonna come across a time where you have to be able to hike with your bike. It's gonna happen. And also just like holistically in your sort of general life sense, it's good to be able to do. Hiking strength is just a really, really good thing to have. And it is completely different to cycling. So that means that A, you've got to be able to go, get up the hill in the first place with the bike. Um, and B, you've got, I know I've got three fingers up, but it is B, because there was the, the addition of the bike. Um, let's say C. C, you've got to be able to get back down again and be able to enjoy it, because if you've completely nailed yourself in the climb, which I might be doing today, because I think the guys that we're out cycling with are gonna be a bit faster on the, the, the climb than me, um, then that's gonna be an issue. So I'm gonna have to really push it today to keep up. Now, in terms of prep for that, what I'm gonna go really go over is stretching. And I say stretching because what I really mean is mobilizing. Um, stretching implies you're stretching muscle tissue, 
whereas mobilization is about giving yourself the degrees of freedom of movement in the joints that you're looking for. Now I'm talking about hips, I'm talking about your whole spine, uh, I'm talking about shoulders, posterior chain mobility, so that's your hamstrings, well everything from your calves basically, all the way up your spinal, through your, your uh, hamstrings all the way through your glutes and spinal erectors. So that's your posterior chain and that takes a big hit on what we're going to be doing. So we're going to mobilize all of that. Okay, so the main things with a hiker bike that you've got are you've got your ascent and you've got your descent. That's two phases. Now in the first phase, the main things you're going to be really, really knackering are your quads, hamstrings, calves, and your back to a certain extent. Your upper body's doing a little bit of pushing as you're going up some of the descents, you may be going to pull a little bit. And the main thing is that it's just long and it's a slog. Um, but on each of those steps, once it gets steeper, you're putting out quite a lot of force for every step you're taking. Now, compared with a bicycle where you're maybe going in first gear and you're just nibbling away at that climb, it's a lot more force per, you know, per, per input, per step. Now, on the second phase, you're really going to be really knackering your grip, especially on these big Monroes. So your grip, fingers leading up into the, the forearm, uh, and then the other things are going to be your upper body. You're going to have to get stronger upper body so that you can get forward and get into a good attack position. If you get tired, you start to lean off the back and you'll lose the front out. Uh, and the other thing is the calves will get the second big hit of the day. Um, the quads will probably get pretty tired as well. Now, the things you can really start to do to, to focus on that are like the bare minimum I would do for warming up for any ride, to be honest with you, with a special emphasis on these because it's going to be a longer descent on opening up some of the space in the forearm. Okay, so first things first, if we're gonna look at the forearm, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our hand down on the ground, facing back. Um, we're just gonna do both of them at the same time, and we're gonna sit back on our heels and just oscillate around. So just scour around and find the tight spots in the forearm, so down the back of the arm here, or front of the arm, depending on the way you look at it. Now you flip the hands over, and you're going to put the hands still facing backwards, but you're going to go palm side up. And you're just going to stretch the other side of the forearm. If you've got really bad wrist pain, if you've broken your wrist before, don't push this into discomfort. You know, six, seven out of ten in terms of pain is what you're really aiming for. You're not aiming for a, a full-on sore session here. And forwards. Now, with the palm facing down, what we're going to do is we're going to apply pressure to the base of the knuckle base of the finger, and then pull up at the end whilst maintaining the full contact of the palm on the floor with each of the digits for a count of five on each of them. What you'll do is you'll feel this emanating up a really specific area of the forearm. And this is just stretching the muscles that pull on each digit one by one. And this should mobilize the finger joints, should mean that they're not fighting quite so much to get that tension. They're going to be more comfortable, they're going to be a little bit more relaxed and hopefully should mean you don't fatigue quite so much on that descent. This is something I try and chuck in every day to try and get a better mobility in the hand and through the forearm and you'll see a lot of benefits in your arm pump. And then just swap hand. Now, when it comes to actually getting onto the descent, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you've got lots of blood in the wrist area. So you're going to just flex the wrists, doing outward circles and inward circles, and trying to just push the extremity of how far you're moving it. And I'd recommend you do that at the top before you hit a descent, so that when you go straight in, you're not going in cold in terms of the wrist. They've got lots of blood there. Now, next thing is just a sequence I'm going to go through that. I would use pretty much every time you go for a ride. Um, and it's mobility, it's not about flexibility. So it's just making sure that your hips um, and most of the, everything below your belly is pretty much moving well, but also turning on the shoulders a little bit in some of those positions. So just gonna go through the sequence now. Basically you're doing a, a series of movements and in between each one you do a downward dog. So when you're in the downward dog, first one, what you're going to do is really flex the calves or extend them. So you're going to drive the heel down to the floor on the right and down to the floor on the left and then alternate and try and just get that leg almost to locked out and drive through the floor with the hands. Now, 
Next thing is just a sequence I'm going to go through that I would use pretty much every time you go for a ride. Um, and it's mobility, it's not about flexibility. So it's just making sure that your hips um, and most of the everything below your belly is pretty much moving well, but also turning on the shoulders a little bit in some of those positions. So just going to go through the sequence now. Basically, you're doing a series of movements and in between each one, you do a downward dog. So when you're in the downward dog, first one, what you're going to do is really flex the calves or extend them. So you're going to drive the heel down to the floor on the right and down to the floor on the left and then alternate and try and just get that leg almost to locked out and drive through the floor with the hands. You do 10 per side. And then step forward with your left leg into a lunge. When you're in the lunge position, you wanna have your knee over the ankle and you wanna drive the knee out and try and sink your crotch down towards your heel, basically. You should feel tightness across the front of the hip flexor here and the insertion of the glute, the hamstring into the glute on the front leg. You can then just come down, try and get your elbows down to the ground. Just trying to get that hip open. And swap sides. I got some tight shorts on. So if you get your riding shorts on, it's probably a better idea for doing this. I've just got a bit of time before the other guys arrive, so I thought I'd do it early. Next one is a pigeon pose. So trying to get the shin as close to perpendicular to your body as possible or parallel to your chest, perpendicular to your other leg. And getting the heel as far forward as you can comfortably. And then just try and sink down. And you'll feel this in the outside of your glute on the leg that's forward. If you think about the position you're in on the bike, you're holding on here, you're in a hip hinge position, leaning forwards. If you find that that's a hard position to get into because of tight hamstrings and tight glutes, then your body's gonna have to really fight to get into that position. That's gonna tire you out so much more. It's just inefficient. So I wanna try and mobilize to get into a good position here. You can take in a big breath and then let that breath out and sink down a little bit lower into the pose. So we're gonna step out and we're gonna do a Cossack squat. So I'm gonna go down to the left and you're gonna squat down, keeping that foot flat on the floor, stretching the other leg out. And you'll feel this stretch along the inside of the leg and the hamstring and in the groin, oh, and the inside of the knee as well there. And if you can, I mean, if you can't get into this position, try and hold on to something in front of you to counterbalance. If you can, then great. Swap to the other side. And just really try and sink into the bottom of it. Get your hands out in front of you to counterbalance. and then just run through again. And do as many times as you've got time for, to be honest with you. You'll get a little bit lower each time, a little bit more from it. So the only other thing I'd add in there, which can be really, really helpful for the quads, which you don't really hit in any of those, those movements, is getting into, well, couch position or couch pose um, or couch, mob couch mobility. We don't have a couch here, we're in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> the next best thing is a pose where we Get into that lunge, grab our foot. We pull our heel as close to our bum as we can and try and keep a chest up. And drive that hip forwards. The only thing you can do if you find the balance of that one really tricky, which I was just finding there, uh, on uneven ground in these shorts, um, is to 
kneel down. Get your feet far enough apart that your bum can actually sit down in between your heels and just lean back. Keep the knees in contact with the ground. And you'll feel this across the whole body of the quad, in the knee, and then on the hip flexor if you can get low enough. If you find any pain in your lower back, tense your bum so that you don't impinge or rely on the spinal area to support you there. And if you can, lower yourself down a little bit further. And just breathe down into it. So, that is my quick fix for getting mobilized before heading up a big hill. Um, use it before any ride. Uh, not necessarily specific to a hiker bike, but uh, with a hiker bike, you wanna just, I mean, you're getting warmed up on the climb <laughs> pretty damn well. But you just want to make sure you've mobilized beforehand so you're not holding any particular tensions in any of the muscles um, and that's it yeah. oh, so good following you guys man that was brilliant. Man, I could hear you catching in places. Yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely catched my toe into a rock. Yeah, I oh, I did. Oh, that hurt. <laughs>